Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday to you. A good cold early morning. <sighs> Trying to not get too behind on what I've been doing around here. So, a uh, video ago, I had some sketches I've been working on. Trying to adapt some wheels to that landscape rake I got for Christmas. And I've been working on it. So, as you can see here, there's something missing from this trailer frame. I'm stealing metal from it. I cut 45 inches of 4 inch channel from this point to this point here on both sides. I'm going to use that as the main supporting arms for the uh, grating wheels. Alright, well, I've been over at the neighbor's yesterday and he helped me uh, with his plug-in sawzall because I kept on going through batteries on my cordless one. Uh, cut off some of the steel that was welded to the trailer for supports and stuff. Right here was a support uh, bar, and then you can see here this weird little like Z or S-shaped uh, piece that was coming off about this tall and made the trailer wider. Now, uh, we didn't barely get down to the top of the channel, so this is all good. Very strong and way overbuilt for what I'm doing. So, if the rake were going right here, across, I guess if this were the rake, then the wheel arm would be coming out about 40 inches and then I'm going to have a bar go down that adjusts to a caster wheel. It's going to be really simple and way cheaper to build one myself, believe it or not, than it is to buy them. They're about uh, at least $250 before shipping online. Uh, shipping is probably at least 50 bucks, so they're a pretty penny. Hopefully I can do better. I am a complete newbie to metalworking or anything pretty much. Uh, I took a welding class when I was a kid. Bolt some stuff together here and there. It's about it. Um, so forgive me if this is obvious to most people. But I tried to take the paint and basic rust off of this piece of channel. Um, as you can see here, I got way too aggressive with some of the tools I was, that were being used uh, to cut off the metal. They were actually straight cutting the metal away. And so um, I first tried this style brush. It was like a brass color. Uh, did nothing. Pretty much made lots of dust and maybe would have done something if I would have sat at it for a few minutes. Just too slow for me. Uh, then I used a cutting wheel which, you know, does a really good job, actually, like when you kind of flex a little bit like this, but it is not meant to do that. And was also making these little weird small cuts, kind of like this at an angle. Um, if I can focus on it. Like these shallow ones here. These huge gouges are not me. That's my neighbor. <laughs> uh, the next thing I tried was this big wheel here. Not this exact one. I have another one that I left at the neighbor's or in the tractor bucket or something. Uh, was doing an okay job but was way, way too heavy for what I needed to do. I used this wheel here to carve all of this cut down to be smooth with the surface. Like you can see, I can run my finger back and forth here. It's not sharp at all. It's pretty much level with the top of the channel. So that is a good wheel to use to kind of take the sharp edges down and off. It kind of worked for the metal, or sorry, for the paint, of course, but that's only because it was so aggressive, it was immediately getting through the paint and down to the metal. Uh, too fast for me. What I ended up actually using, finally, was uh, we were at Lowe's getting the pieces for the this thing, and they had this, like, uh, kit that had four of these wheels in it, all the different types, and this was one of them. This is amazing. It takes off the paint perfectly, pretty quickly with not much downforce on the tool and it leaves a really nice pattern on the metal. You can see it's just kind of buffed a little bit there. Uh, nice scratches all the same direction mostly like back here and it took the paint off immediately. Also some of the surface rust. I know this has a lot of you know this pitting right here from the rust where the metal was actually removed because it was converted to rust and then uh, taken away by the tool but that's not a problem the paint will fill that in and uh, that isn't this tool's fault so that's that those are the tools I use for removing paint from steel and if it's just paint definitely go with this one if you have to like cut it and then strip the paint cut it use this wheel right here 
which is kind of thicker, to file down all of the cutting spots to make it nice and smooth, and then hit it with what's called the flap wheel. And you should be good to go. It's looking beautiful. Only took a few minutes. And uh, now I'm also going to try another product I just picked up after talking to the paint guy in Lowe's. was uh, this Safer paint strip thing. Supposedly works for like half an hour to a day. It's really cold out here. My hands are already freezing just from using the camera and being out here. So I'm going to try to just spray this stuff, walk away, come back later, and make short work of it. Uh, we'll see if it works. Cleanup's going nicely. The, all these pits are actually coming off, believe it or not. This area right here used to look like that. Or this. Just a little time with the flapper wheel. And it's good to go. I'm, you could sit here for days and make it like a mirror, but I'm just trying to get most of the pits and the paint off. I'm going to flip it on its side and then address this horrible surface right here. Alright, now for the rough part here. Is it doing anything? Yes, it is. But wow, this is damaged, huh? Just got to get this rust off and scratch it up a little so I can put some new paint on it. Oh, yeah. Uh, this might not be obvious to everyone, but wear breathing protection, you know? Just something, anything to cover your nose and mouth when you're doing this. It'll catch some of the dust, some of the fine particles. Also, glasses of some form. Wraparound safety glasses would be better than these, but uh, anything's better than nothing. <clears throat> you don't want to get metal in your eye. I've been there. High school, metal shop, was open in another person's locker. Teacher told me to do so. They're cleaning it out. Hit it with a hammer and a breaker chisel. Shard went off the back of my safety glasses into my eye. They told me to hold it open and walk to the ER, which is like a mile away. I did. <laughs> you don't want metal in your eye at all. So here's that safer strip stuff. I guess that means it's still not safe. But here's the only wind-free area in this little enclosure. It foams up really nicely and just sits there. I can already see it starting to bubble up that paint. See that? It went to work right away where there's more exposed metal. Makes sense. Can get underneath the paint layer. Over here where it's more sealed, it's mostly still just foam. So I'm just going to set it here and forget it, I guess. Don't sue me, Ron Popeil. It's been a couple hours. By golly, this stuff's working. Look at all that flaking paint. It's making sort of a mess, though. I'll just let it stay, go into town, grabbing some other hardware for this, uh, mainly a drill bit, and then I'll be back. Two days of stripping later, ended up using the sanding wheel the whole time. It's looking good. I'm now grabbing some wipes, getting all the surface metal and residue off. Also, should have just stuck with the sanding wheel the whole time. That goop only took a one layer or so off of that paint, and I ended up having to sand it anyway. So, could have just kept myself uh, ahead and just did that the whole time. But now I'm just going to paint it on the back to seal it and move on. Using this Rust Oleum stuff that uh, actually stopped the rust and is extra resistant for corrosion since it's going to be outside the whole time.
one of the beams is painted. Here's what the surface looks like right before it's shot. On this one, you can probably tell that I was pretty much over stripping the paint. What I did is strip off most of the layer, got most of the rust underneath it taken off. Now we're left with this. Also, this is me using the wrong wheel. There it is. Two coats on it. Let it sit for just a few minutes after the first coat. Now I'm going to set it aside and get it drying. Alright, for the adapter plates to connect the wheels of the casters to the adjustable height pole, I needed some large, thick metal and found this big plow blade in the back of the neighbor's property. Very, very hard steel. It took us like almost 20 minutes to try to cut halfway through it or so. Gave up using a torch. And it came out really, really rough, but it worked for what it was designed for to adapt the caster to the pipe. All the adapters are cut very roughly with a torch. This is incredibly hard steel. We could only get uh, so far through with the saw before it started jiggling our skeletons to death. So I spent the past 20 minutes or so with a grinder just kind of uh, taking off the surface rust, getting the slag off, even in this down a little bit. Um, got it all cleaned off, now I'm going to go back and prime it. And basically the adapters for the casters are going to be two of these sandwiched together, like so. Um, one of them with clearance holes cut for the bolts to come through, the others with the hex clearance. All of them will have two, four holes on them, which will go all the way through to the caster. So there it is. This is a little close to where the blade starts and it gets beveled, but I have enough surface up here that I should be able to drill right through in the corner of the plates. That's the plan. This adapter flange accepts the black pipe for vertical adjustment of the wheel. It did go through? It is. It just barely went through. Hey, just enough. It was just a tiny little bit. Here are the pieces of channel. They're going to act as kind of the anti wiggle bars. I have one that's larger for the front and one shorter one for the back. Pipe down through it. Yep. <sighs> All right. <laughs> that well lined everything up. Cool. Time to trap it. Okay. 
The wheel boxes have been through drilled. We decided to go with two instead of four like we had originally thought. I think it'll be just fine. Can't even move the box now that it's all torqued down anyway. The through hole works perfectly. Now what we have to do is we have to put the pipe through, come back through in this little gap here, and drew right through uh, a through hole for the set pin. And that's going to be a little tricky. I am a little worried, but we should be able to pull it off. Right now we're transferring a measurement to one of the pieces of channel, which is going to brace behind the rig's cross piece. We're just making sure that it's uh, lined up. Because it's not going to be centered along the channel, it means we're going to have a left and a right wheel piece. Ah oh, well, trying to get as close to the edge as possible. Side. I don't want to drill on this thing yet. Do we have an extension for We used the existing bolt that everything else bolts into, tightened it about the same. This still wiggles slightly, but not too much. It's nice and tight right here. Cross braces here have been installed with two 7 16 bolts. Same with the front one here. It's just to prevent uh, this from wiggling this way just a little bit now we've also gone and installed all the way through some 3 8 by like four and a half or five inch pins that essentially sandwiches the entire thing together here and here Installed. I'm just doing the final cleaning of everything, clearing away of the tools from the site. The pinholes have been drilled for the first setting. It's about this high off the ground. I call it the tumbleweed killer. We'll go from there. I need to have three positions. One with the wheels all the way up, one as it is currently, and another for engagement in the ground for lots of moving. And then I hope we'll be good. Well, I just did a test drive. Nothing broke. I am super excited about that. Now I'm going back to my place, gonna have Bia drive me back, and then I'm gonna go grade the road like all day, see what happens with the rake, and go from there. In every situation, when you're making something yourself and adapting something from, you know, someone else built, you're gonna have a version two, maybe three, four, five. So I'm expecting to need to change some stuff, but from my test run of about a quarter mile, nothing broke. Oh, I'm so excited. This has been a lot of fun. Well, I think it's actually working. Looks really nice. I can't wait to put it to the actual test of driving for a couple weeks on it. 
seeing how it goes, get reports from the neighbors. Should be awesome. Well, hopefully they're good reports, you know. Now I'm going to go home, drill some more adjustment holes, try it on a couple different settings, see which one's the best. I'm really liking it so far. It's holding up well. Nothing's falling apart. Nothing's falling off of it. It's a great start.